Welcome to Fire to Inspire the Podcast. I'm your host, Angel Yasmin. And today's quote is, you don't have to eat less, but eat right. Today, we have a very special guest by the name of Mr. G. He is recognized as Dr. Savy's right-hand man. And he's now working on a documentary with Nick Cannon that Nipsey Hussle was working on avidly before he was murdered that will narrate Dr. Savy's trial of 1985. I want to start off by saying that I'd like to clarify some things that we all had some deep thoughts and questions about Dr. Sabi's journey. So if you're not sure who Dr. Sabi is, he is a natural-born, self-proclaimed healer. An angel is who I think he is that was sent here to heal others from a natural standpoint. He was known for curing AIDS, cancer, diabetes, stroke, STDs, lupus, the blind, all the above, I would say from herbs and unique vegan-based diets. Dr. Sabi claimed in a New York newspaper ad that he could cure AIDS and was allegedly accused by the U.S. medical corporations because it would take away from their own profits. And we're talking about the big pharma guys. So let me make one thing clear. Dr. Sabi had no education, y'all. He was self-educated. He never went to school a day in his life. But Gandhi said, those who know how to think need no teachers. And we all mourn the death of Dr. Sabi and Nipsey Hussle. May their souls rest in power. So now that you have a little bit of history, we can go ahead and welcome Mr. G to the show. What's going on? How you doing? Hey, peace, Queen. How you doing? I appreciate the invitation. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time out. And look, we all have some burning questions about Dr. Sadie's legacy. So tell us about the relationship you had with him and how did you guys meet? Oh, my God. He was a great guy. And we met, my sister was diagnosed with lupus about eight years eight years ago. But I didn't know. I didn't know. Just the family knew. I didn't know. The family knew what was going on. I found out when Lucas started from getting the best of her. My great niece actually told me by mistake. You know how kids, kids only know to tell the truth. They don't know to lie mm-hmm. or hold back stuff. She was like, oh, I'm so sorry that we're going to lose auntie soon. And I'm like, what you mean lose what? auntie? Because the doctors already told the family she wasn't going to make it to see 2015. Oh, so, wow. At this point, I was I called her immediately. I was like, yo, what's going on? And she was like, yeah, we didn't want to tell you, you know, because I have seven siblings, seven of us, siblings, okay. and her and I, we're close in age. She's only a year older than me. So my other brothers and sisters, they're a lot older than us. So I always consider her really like my sister. Everybody else is my uncle, even though we don't have the same mother and father. So... I said, nah, I'm not ready to bury my sister. So I went online, being that Western medicine was saying it was nothing that could be done. Um, and I, I was listening to a Dick Gregory interview, and then he mentioned Dr. Sebi. You know how when you mention somebody, they have a suggestive video on the side? So I saw Dr. Uh-huh. Sebi's video, he used to live, clicked on that. I heard him say he can cure AIDS, sickle cell, blindness, lupus. And I said, that man just said lupus. So I have to find him. Hopped on the plane to Honduras. And to make a long story short, I found him. Um, his daughter, Samai, wrote me online. It was like, like that's like a long story. I don't want to give you a whole bunch of details of how that <laughs> went about. But yeah. I met him, and he was able to um, kill my sister within 52 days. Wow. That after, is an amazing story. Wow. Yes. After killing oh. my sister... I told I told him, you know what, I I need to help you spread this word. And I and I went on the road with him. I scheduled his last seven lectures in the United States. I was the one who put put it all together. And that's how our journey started. So you yeah. have a book coming out on July nineteenth titled yeah. My Journey with Doctor Savy, right? What are some yeah. takeaways that we'll get from the book? Oh my God. You guys are gonna <laughs> understand what kind of person Dr. Sebi was. Because a lot of people, they don't know how funny he was, how crazy he was. He was a big kid. <laughs> um, you got to know how human he was. Because even though he did what he did in 1987 or 88 with the court case, I remember him more as a jokester and somebody who just liked to live his life. I love it. I love it. I can only imagine. Like, I've watched so many videos of him, and I get so tickled because I'm like, I wish I knew this man. You had an opportunity 
to meet him and actually experience life with him. I mean, how does that make you feel? Um, one of the things I've, I've learned from him is to search for whatever I need within me. He used to always say we give people so much power when everything we need is in the mirror. So I always okay. live by that. And I always live by that. And I and I even asked them at one point. I was like, Doc, what made you what made you learn about the herbs and what brought you to that? And he was like, Well, the Bible in Genesis, Ezekiel, and Revelation, it says the the herbs is for the healing of the nation. So I'm just going by what the Bible said. He Ooh, simplified everything. <laughs> he simplified <laughs> everything. You know, even when I asked him about the court case, because I was like, how did you beat the New York Supreme Court when it was 2,781 holistic doctors who who was Ooh. prosecuted before you and they all lost? you the only mm. one who won. He was like, well, they, they prosecuted me. They convicted me. They charged me. They charged me for practicing medicine without a license, and they and they charged me for claiming to heal AIDS. So, and I just broke down in court. In order for them, in order for me to to practice medicine without a license, in order for something to be considered medicine, it has to have a chemical in it. They took my herbs to the Lancaster lab. And they found out that it was not one chemical in all of my compounds. So I beat the case then because there yeah. my herbs are not considered medicine. It was considered food. That's why my herbs are considered cell food. So okay. it's like I'm curing people. I'm, I'm curing people with, with herbs from the earth. So they threw that case away. If they would have found one chemical in any of my compounds, I would have been convicted. Being that they didn't find any chemicals in um, none of my herbs, they couldn't consider that medicine, so I beat that charge. And they asked me to bring in seven people, no, nine people, actually, for each disease uh-huh. that I claimed to have cured, and they brought 77 people to the court, to the court <laughs> that he cured. And this is all public record. The prosecutors even placed they planted some people to go in and um, that had illnesses. And the people mm-hmm. that they planted, when they took the stand, they were like, we cured. So <laughs> <laughs> it back, Look it at back God. Quiet. Look at you, God. You feel me? It backfired. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know what? That's amazing. So now you're filming a documentary, right? Well, you know, you're, you're working closely with Nick Cannon. So what's the mm-hmm. overall message that you guys are trying to convey to the audience? Like, are you going to answer some questions? Like, what are some of the highlights? One of the things that I like about Nick Cannon is that he's a real humble brother, down to earth, non-confrontational at all. He wants to point out all of the positives in Dr. Sebi's life. He's concentrating on the case and on people that's in Dr. Sebi's life who have love for him because Dr. Sebi has so many chapters in his life. So what Nick Cannon is trying to do, he's trying to get a, a view of Dr. Sebi from all his loved ones, family and friends. We started taping in Atlanta. Nick actually went to Uganda like about two, three weeks ago. I and mean, then we just started taping in Atlanta this week. And um, the people that came out really did their thing. You're the healer because I can give you everything to heal you, but unless you believe in it and you apply it, and so where you um you're gonna be healed. He cannot heal anybody. You have to heal yourself. Wow. I just want everybody to know I'm not related to Dr. Sebi at all. Dr. Sebi was a good friend. He was like a father yeah. figure, but not my father. Mm-hmm. My name is Abelardo right. Guerrero Jr. Mm-hmm. My father's name is Abelardo Guerrero. He was my first teacher. My dad taught me that we we start dying the day we born. Whether I'm here 49 years or, or four, 49 days, you know, um, God don't make no mistakes. So, no, I'm not a, I've never been afraid of dying. I know that God, whatever, whatever is for me is for me, and I'm not going to, God don't make mistakes. So, no, I mean, I, that's the last thing I, that's on my mind is death. And that was one thing that I liked, the conversation I had with Nick as well, he believed we all have a purpose, 
do. And I just love that you guys are picking up the torch from Nipsey because he was working really hard on it and you guys picked up the torch. That's awesome. And I really do commend you guys for that. You know what? It's going to be a blessing. This is going to be huge. I love how you said that the healing is not over. When Dr. Sebi died, we all felt like, okay, well, that's the end of the healing. That's the end of somebody that knows how to cure it all. But now it's our job to educate ourselves on what are some of the things that he had, the list of ingredients that he had to heal our body. But we need to adhere to it. We need to apply to it. Humans are so disconnected from reality that they need the studies to prove that eating raw vegetables is healthy. Mm -hmm. That's so stupid to me. Let's Mm -hmm. wake up, y'all. Let's do better. Let's educate ourselves. And I really think that this documentary is going to do that. And I just appreciate you guys working so hard on it. Oh, my God. I'm excited. Yeah, because Nipsey Hussle reached out to me several times. We set up about maybe three three meetings, but for some Uh reason we wasn't able to meet for the meetings because he was on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast. But we did see each other. And at Hot 97, I was there on other business that we ran into each other. And he was like, yo, Mr. G, what's up? Our people need to link up. And I was like, yeah, definitely. How do people hit my people and we can make this happen? So we made plans, but we, it never fell through. Nick Cannon took over and we just, he, he took over with his feet on the ground running already. He's a real go-getter, like, we had one conversation, and a week later, we already, like two weeks later, we already filming. So, I love it. Yeah, okay. his, brother, his brother's no joke. He's not playing. He's getting the job done, and yeah, I, yeah, love, he, I love it. I love it. He is. Yeah. And he's doing, and one thing that I like about him is that he's open to, to hear the truth. His main, his main concern is that we find credible people that knew Dr. Sebi and knew, um, that know his teachings. And mm-hmm. that's why I feel blessed that he hired me as one of the producers of, of this documentary to make sure that we get a, you know, a good product. Now, you know, it's unfortunate that we, you know, heard about Nipsey's death and he was working on this documentary. But I want to ask you, Mr. G, like personally between you and I and the audience, yes, of course, you know, what do you – think happened with Nipsey? Do you think the controversy or these conspiracy theories are true to you? Do you think that somebody, you know, murdered him because he was working on a documentary and they didn't want it to leak out? Um, you asking me for what I think, so I'm going to tell you what I think. And based on what me, that this was something that among people that know each other, this guy that killed Nipsey, uh, it was somebody that, it was a beef that they had. They said that he disrespected, not, that he felt disrespected, that he wanted Nipsey to do something for him. And Nipsey was like, nah, I'm not dealing with you. I heard you a snitch. And and Nipsey happened to be at his store, and he wasn't even supposed to be in his store that day. He gave his security the day off. Because Nipsey was so cool, he was like, nah, I gave him the day off already, so let me just go do do my thing to help out some other person, and he just mm-hmm. got caught with his with his you know, with his guards down by somebody that was out to get him. So no, I don't I don't think it had it had anything to, to do with the Dr. Seppi um, Dr. Seppi documentary. It just once he died, they connected it to that. Even Dr. Seppi death, in my opinion, don't have anything to do with the big pharma. You know, well you you read in my book. Who I feel to um, have something to do with Doc's death is it's not what the people think. It's not what the people think. Even, like, I'm not saying that they're not capable of it, but in my opinion, right now, the government don't have anything to do with Dr. Sebi's death. And in my book, you'll see why um, I feel that way, and I feel strongly about it. Oh, so that means we got to book, y'all. We got to buy this book. Mm-hmm. The reason why I'm having this discussion on Fire to Inspire is because we really do need to get back to our roots of food being our medicine and also being aware that we don't need to be just feeding into these conspiracies. We actually need to be real brand ambassadors for healthy eating, not being vegan, not being vegetarian, but being Mm -hmm. conscious eaters, guys. Like We have to understand that what we put in our Mm -hmm. mouth is the most important thing to keep our bodies running. I love that you said that because Dr. Ted used to always talk about when they bought the Africans 
when he brought the Africans from Africa, they didn't bring their food with them. A lot of people laughed at, I don't know if you know this, oh, you, the wall of melon, because the Africans, they were given the chicken rice. They was actually force-feeding mm-hmm. them this food, and they didn't want to eat it. But when they saw a wall of melon, they knew that was alkaline. They knew that that was of nature, so they was eating it. And so they tried to make fun of us for liking watermelon because they know how how much iron watermelon gives us. But what I want to say is we wouldn't even need medicine if we ate right. Oh, come on. That's why you always say let your food be your medicine. We need to reteach ourselves from our old beliefs because it makes no sense that we don't question Pharma. We don't we don't question the medicine that we take and put in our bodies, and we trust the medicine over what God created. It, to me, that just really baffles me. I don't understand why we are taught that way, but we have to be patient with each other. I know that we all want each other to know the truth, and some people are very stubborn. I'll talk to some of my loved ones that are very sick, and they're going mm-hmm. through things, and it breaks my heart because they don't want to accept that raw foods and veggies and fruits is where it's at. They don't want to accept that. They think that that's more dangerous, that they would die from the raw food than they would die from chemo. I don't get it. I don't understand it. And that is why I want to make sure that we're educating each other and we're really you finding can, out the real truth, you know? Yeah, you, and, you can go by history. You can go by mm-hmm. history. If when you go to Big Mama house and eat all the chicken, potatoes, rice, mm-hmm. cheese, you eat all of that in your body. They they call it nigger riders. Your body just want to <laughs> shut down and sleep <laughs> because dead food, dead body. Live yep. food, live body. If you never gonna eat a, you never gonna eat an alkaline meal and get sleepy because your cells is be reju- um rejuvenated. If you eat all that dead food, of course your body's gonna want to react to what what you put in it. That's why we we get sleepy and we start nodding because it's weighing mm-hmm. down on us. So our dead food, dead body, live food, live body. Doctor Sabi always said, if nature didn't make it, don't take don't it. Don't take look. it. <laughs> and that's coming that's from a, the master itself. He is the master that's his teacher. Nuts. That's mm-hmm. his nuts. And it's funny that you said that because that was the last T-shirt that we uh, designed, Doctor Sebi and I. If nature oh, didn't wow. make it, don't take it. If you if you go to Doctor Sebi's book on Instagram, you see the T-shirt there. If nature don't make it, don't take it. And a lot of the people who's pre-ordering the book now, because the book is not going to be ready to July nineteenth, but the people that are pre-ordering the book now, it's going to come with their shirt with that T-shirt. I can't wait. Yes. I'm definitely going to get mine and make sure you get yours. Tell them how they can find your book. Like, how can they order? Your book and everything oh, online. You can go. They can go to drsebibook five zero four dot com, drsebibook five zero four dot com, and just follow the link right there. It'll show you how to pre order it. Awesome. And you can. Awesome. They can also follow us on Instagram on at drsebibook, and they'll see mm-hmm. what I've done on on that page. Is I put a whole bunch of little of snippets of Dr. Sebi talking backstage at home, stuff like that. So they can see another part of Dr. Sebi that they don't know about. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so good. I'm so grateful that you're doing this. Thank you for answering the call to your life because this is your calling. You know that, right? This is huge. Wow. And, You're and the first I can person only, to tell me that. <laughs> I'm telling you, how blessed are you to even meet somebody like that? He is such an angel. To me, he was sent on this earth to heal people, celebrities of this world that we, you know, I'm sure the book will talk about. I hope it does. Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's amazing to hear that you were his right-hand man. And so I can only imagine how wise Dr. Sebi was in real life. So can you leave us with some encouraging words? What was the biggest thing you learned from Dr. Sebi, and what can you give us today? Well, one of the biggest things I learned, like I said earlier, is that we need to believe in ourselves. And when I mean out of ourselves, I don't mean just yourself. It's people that look like you. Dr. Sebi used to always say, I'm telling people I have the cure to AIDS and they don't believe me because they look like me. Had I been white, blue eyes, and blonde hair, they would believe me in a heartbeat. We just have more confidence in ourselves. We have more power in unity than instead of tearing each other down, 
let's believe in who we are. One thing I liked about him is he never preached racism or anything like that. He understand it was too. We were different, but he would always say we're different, not better. So just believe in ourselves. Like don't we don't have to look outside for what we can do for ourselves. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate these healthy nuggets that you gave us and taking the time out because man, did I have to chase you down? I apologize so much because when we when you called me when we was out there. I was on my way to the, we were going to do it, and then Nick Cannon said, now nah, we we, we we going to wild it out because he was still filming that. And by the time we yeah. finished that, I had to catch a plane to New York. And I was like, oh, man, but I got to do this fire to inspire the podcast. <laughs> but I'm so glad that you're very persistent, and I want to commend you on your show. I looked at some other shows that you did, and I like your energy and Thank you for answering your calling so that I have a, I get a chance to say what I have to say to the world, too. So I appreciate Aww. you, sister. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, guys, thank you so much for joining this party with a purpose. I'll catch you next week. All right, it's getting real hot up in here because we are so fired up. When they strike, we not